All right, folks, what I want to do in this segment is I just want to basically show you how to use a, how to mathematically use a market graph, how to identify the price, which is given by P, the quantity supplied, which is given by Q sub S, and how to identify quantity demanded, which is given by Q sub D, okay? Uh, and basically what these are is very simply is they are coordinates on the coordinate plane. And so as long as you have the curve, the mathematical curve, uh, then you can just identify these points as vertical coordinates as price and horizontal coordinates as quantity. And what I want to do here is first I want to set the, the scale on our, on this particular market graph, okay? So we're going to say that the price that each one of these uh, grid lines is $4. So we're going to say that this is $4. And then as we go up, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, this would be 8, 9, 10, 11, this would be 12. So I'll put a 12 there. This would be 16, then 20, then 24, 28, then 32, 36. So these are all of the possible prices of whatever product this is that's being bought and sold. And on the bottom here, we're going to mark each one of these grid lines as a certain quantity, how many are being purchased. So let's say that each grid line represents five units. So this would be five units. This second one, that would be 10 units. 15, then 20, 25, then 30, 35, then 40, 45, then 50. It's a terrible looking five there, but it'll do. 55, then 60, 65, then 70, and 75. And what you're seeing here is basically, so what we're basically saying is that the demand curve is representing uh, the degree to which the buyers will be willing and able to buy. They are willing to purchase only 10 units at a price of $36. But at a price of $12, they are willing and able to purchase 55 units. And then the supply curve is the same kind of idea. At a price of $32, the sellers are willing and able to produce 70 units. But down here at a price of $8, they are only willing and able to produce 10 units. Okay, So that's what the supply and the demand curve are saying. So what I want to do here is I'm going to give you a price. I'm going to tell you what the price is. And then what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and identify the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. And all you have to do to get the quantity supplied is go up, is when I give you a price, let's say I give you a price of 16, you'll go across the price line and you want to find where the price line hits the supply curve. And wherever the quantity, where it hits the supply curve, that is the quantity supplied. And wherever that price line hits the demand curve, that is going to be the quantity demanded. Okay? So let's start with, let's say, I'm going to grab a purple marker here. Let's say that the price is um, $28. At a price of $28, that's right here, so P equals $28. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure out the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. All right, so now I'm going to uh, see, see how well you did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dashed line. We're going to go across here, and this point right here is where the price of $28 hits the demand curve, and then it's going to keep going over to where it's going to then hit the supply curve. Now. At what quantity does the price line of $28, at what quantity does it hit the supply curve? Well, from here, we can go down that quantity line and we can see a quantity of 60. 
And so what we're going to say here is we're going to say that quantity supplied is 60. So at a price of 28, the quantity supplied is 60. Okay, so now what is quantity demanded? All right, going to stay on the price line of 28, only now we're only going to go over to the demand curve. And this is where that price hits the demand curve, so we would from there go vertically down to the quantity axis, and whatever number that is, that's halfway between 20 and 30, so this is 25. So at a price of 28, we have a quantity demanded of 25. And so what we're basically saying, let's go put 25 here, okay? What we're saying here is this, is that if the price of this product was $28, the sellers would be willing and able to make and sell 60 units. But the buyers are only willing and able to buy 25 units. And I want to point something out here. This is a situation where maybe the buyers and sellers agree on a price of $28, but they do not agree on the quantity. So without agreement, we're not going to have what we call an efficient market. Now, will there be some items produced and sold? Yes, the sellers, they want to produce 60, but the buyers only want to buy 25 of them. Will there be 25 of them produced and sold? Yes, there will, 20, because 25 of the units are in agreement on purchasing at 28. But the sellers, they, they would like to have agreement on all 60 of the units, and the buyers are just not willing to buy 60 units, okay? Okay, now let's try a different price, and we'll do the exact same thing. Let's say that the price is, we're gonna do a different one now, I wanna put a comma here. Let's say that the price charged is $12, okay? So we'll come over here to the 12, and we'll say that our price, the price is gonna be $12, okay? Um, why don't you go ahead and see if you can figure out what the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded would be. All right, so at a price of 12, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a dashed line here, and this is where a price of 12 is gonna hit the supply curve. And then we're gonna go over a little bit further, and here is where a price of 12 is gonna hit the demand curve. And so, at a price of $12, the quantity supplied is going to come from the supply curve. And where does this horizontal 12 price hit the supply curve? It hits at this point. So from there, we're going to go vertically down to the quantity, and we see a quantity of 20. So at a price of 12, quantity supplied is 20 units. But if we now go over to the demand curve, it hits right here and we go down, we can see that the quantity demanded is halfway between 50 and 60, that's 55. So quantity demanded is gonna be 55 units. Okay, so here quantity supplied is 20, quantity demanded is 55. So at a price of 12, if the buyers and sellers are agreeing on a price of 12, they're, but look, they're not agreeing on the quantity. Again, now the suppliers are only going to make 20 units, but the buyers, they want to buy 55 units. So many of the buyers are going to go without because the sellers are only willing to make 20 units. So we do not have agreement on the quantity at a price of $12. And here's what, I'm look, here's what I want you to understand. We're not ready to do it right now, but I want you to look at this graph. Can you try and figure out a price that could be charged in this market to where the buyers and the sellers would both agree on the quantity? The quantity supplied would be equal to the quantity demanded. And that's what we're looking for here. We are looking 
for a situation where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded at a particular price, at a particular price. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that price is right now, but there is a price somewhere on here, and it's probably somewhere between 28 and 12, because if you look, if you notice, at 28, quantity supplied is higher than quantity demanded. But as the price went down, quantity supplied went below quantity demanded because quantity demanded went up and quantity supplied went down. So somewhere in between 28 and 12, there is a price where quantity supplied is, is equal. It's the same number as quantity demanded. Okay, And if that happened, this would result, this would result in agreement between buyers and sellers. This would result in agreement between buyers and sellers. And that's what we want. We want agreement between buyers and sellers. And now there's one more thing that I want to show you that's going to lead us into our next lesson. And that is this. Do you notice that when the price changed from 28 down to 12, that we had, see this right here? That quantity supplied changed from 60 to 20. Okay? So quantity, so when we had a change in price led to led to a change in quantity supplied and it also led to a change in quantity demanded see the price changed then quantity supply chain supplied changed then quantity demanded changed and here's what i want to say is that because quantity supplied or because supply is a relationship between quantity and price a mathematical relationship between quantity and price all we have to do is change the price and then we will move along the supply curve to a different place. We moved from here down to here and we had a change in quantity supplied. Another way we could draw do is like this. This is where we started. This was the initial quantity supplied. This is quantity supplied one. And then the second quantity supplied is all the way down here. So then quantity supplied two was all the way down here. This is a one, sorry, it's a very ugly one, but it's there, okay? Whereas when there was a change in price, price started here, right? And we had a decrease in price. So this was price one, this was price two. Initially at the first price, quantity demanded one was here, and quantity demanded after the price changed went up. This is a change in quantity demanded. And now we have quantity demanded here. So this one was a change in quantity supplied. That happened when there was a change in price. And that change in price also resulted in a change in quantity demanded. And this quantity demanded and quantity supplied are technical terms in economics. Okay? And now we're ready to move on to the next segment.